Uh, we're going to start with a class called person today. We're going to review we're going to review inheritance concepts today and we're going to start off by creating a class called person and then I'm going to create another class called Australian. And what we'll do is we'll set up an inheritance relationship here where Australian will inherit from person. So let's go over and look at the person class first. And we'll just keep some very simple information about each person. We'll keep track of their name and we'll keep track of their date of birth. And what we'll do here is we'll create a method called the greet method. And this will be our little person class. In order to make it easier to print persons, we're going to also create a two string. All right, so that's that. Now, optionally, it's a good idea to put something in front of this. Yes, Mr. Pandali? At override. We're going to talk about that today. And the thing you need to know is that if I don't put this in here, right, I, I can still, it'll still compile. You see that, right? And if I put this in, it will compile. The advantage of putting the at override is that the compiler will make sure that you're actually overriding the parent class's two string. And if it doesn't override it and you miss and you have this here, it will warn you, or actually it'll create a compiler error that will tell you that the header for the method is the signature doesn't match the method you're trying to override. So it's useful to have this. On the AP exam, it is completely optional. So you don't have to have it. Now here, I mentioned to you that we are overriding the two string of the parent class, but you notice that there is no extends here. So then the question is, does person have a parent class? Person has a parent class or not? And if so, what is the parent class? Ms. Caitlin, can you tell me, first of all, does person have a parent class? All classes in Java have a parent class. What is the parent class of person? Object is the parent class of person. So it turns out that if you don't supply person with a two string, it will take the default two string from the object class. And I'm going to show you what that is in a minute. But right now, I have overridden the two string from the object uh, class. And I've provided a more detailed two string, which will be much more useful to someone creating a person. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to create some test code. And instead of being lazy and putting it in one of these methods, I'm going to create a separate code piece of code called the person tester which is going to contain my main method and in here i'm simply going to create a person and print them now i have to also create some getters and setters here to help me load up this information and i also have to create a constructor this would be a great time for you to go ahead and do those things write two getters two setters and one full featured constructor that takes the name and the date of birth as arguments and loads them into the file into the uh, object please write all those methods now i know that some of you are still not finished but i'm in a little bit of a rush today so let me just walk you through the getters at least so here is the get name method the use of the this keyword is optional here but it is my tendency to use it so i'll be using it for from now on and all through next year in data structures. Here is the get date of birth method. These are the getters. These are also called accessor methods. These are the setters. They're also called mutator methods. And here I'm setting the name and the date of birth. Getter methods usually have return types that match the type of the data being returned. And the setter methods usually have a void return type because they don't usually return anything. Here is my full featured constructor. You can see that when I create a person, I pass the name and the date of birth, and then I set them to the permanent variables here. So if you've done all this correctly, you should be able to get a, a fully compiled a file here. And now if I go over to the tester, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a main method, create a person, and print them. So I'm going to go. So here I've created a person and here I am printing the person out because I've supplied a two string, a custom two string for the class. This should print everything nicely formatted on a single line. So let's run it. And you can see here that Ivan and his date of birth are showing up nicely here. 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a greet method for this person. And oh, we actually did that already. Okay, what well, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create another class called Australian. And what I want to do is I want to have the Australian inherit all the methods of the person class, and then we're going to override the greet method. So remind your peers how you create an inheritance relationship in Java. Mr. Matt Loop, sir, I want Australian to inherit from person. What do I do to the class to make that happen? Okay, so I'm going to go extends person. And just with those two simple words, Australian has now inherited most of the capabilities of person. Now I have a harder question for you. Looking at all this code for person, there is one piece and one piece only that is not inherited. Please discuss with your partner and if you can figure out which piece is not inherited by the Australian class. Mr. Baker, can you tell me, sir, what piece of code is not inherited by the Australian class? It's the constructor. Now, what about these uh, uh, data, these attributes? Are they inherited by the Australian? Okay, it's kind of a tricky question. They are inherited, but they, but the Australian class cannot directly access them because they're private. If you had labeled these as public, which you can, should never do, by the way, but if you label these as public, then the Australian objects would be able to access them. But here, it's sort of like your rich uncle has died and left you a bunch of money, but they put it in a trust so you can't touch it. So yes, these attributes are inherited, but they're not easily accessed. So here, we might want to ask the question, how come the constructor is not inherited? And I need to share with you a little secret that I have kept from you up until now. It turns out that methods in Java are inherited, and the reason the constructor is not inherited is the constructor is not actually a method in Java. And there are three reasons why the constructor is not actually a method. The first is that methods have return types. You can see here that this method called get date of birth has this string return type. Methods that don't want to return anything still have a return type. They have a void return type. But you can see that in a constructor, there is no return type, not even void. That's one of the three reasons why, technically speaking, constructors are not methods. The next reason is that I just mentioned to you that constructors are not inherited. All methods are inherited, and therefore, since constructor is not inherited, that's one of the reasons it is not a method. The third reason is that the name of the constructor is completely restricted to be exactly the same as the name of the class. So you can see here that the, the constructor has to take the same name as the class name. Methods don't have those restrictions. And so for all three of those reasons, technically speaking, methods are not constructors. Methods are not constructors. Okay, so we have about five minutes left before the bell rings for lunch. I'm going to let you have these few minutes. If you haven't caught up with the code, please use this opportunity to do so. When you get back from lunch, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about what it means to, what it means to override methods, and we're going to take a little example.